So if you allow your blade RPM to decrease, and uh, let's say that they, you have a blade RPM decrease of about 10%. So earlier I used the example of a uh, tip speed of 500 miles per hour on the advancing side. <clears throat> when you figure the amount of airflow across on the advancing side, you're using the rotational speed of it plus your forward speed. And on the retreating side, you're using the rotational speed minus the forward air speed. So in this situation, if we allow our rotor RPM to decrease by 10%, your rotational tip speed now is about 450 miles per hour. So on the advancing side, you've got airflow at 450 plus the uh, 100 miles per hour, or about 550 miles an hour of airflow at the three o'clock position, that on the tip of the blade. And on the retreating side, you then have 450 minus 100, or about uh, 350 miles an hour of airflow across the uh, tip of the blade at the nine o'clock position. If you compare 400 and 600, that's a factor of about one point, or it is a factor of 1.5. If you compare 350 to 550, that's a factor of about 1.57. So it's an increase. It's an increase in the, in the uh, difference between the amount of uh, airflow, a greater percentage increase in, in difference on the amount of airflow. And so the symmetry of lift increases. It's thus the teetering has to increase as well. Okay, so why is all this important? Well, you need to understand what makes teetering increase and decrease, and I'll give you an example of that. So one example is the what's called V and E, or uh, velocity never exceed. It's the maximum speed that you're supposed to go in the aircraft at. Well, in a helicopter, the V and E, as you go up higher and higher in altitude, the V and E, the speed, your maximum speed that you're allowed to go actually uh, goes down and it goes down pretty appreciably the higher that you get. Well, why? Why does that happen? Well, the blades turn at a constant rotational speed. When you've got the governor on and it's spinning at 100%, then the rotational speed of the blades do not change. All right? As we go up into higher and higher altitudes, the air is much thinner. So for the rotor disc to produce an adequate amount of lift to support the weight of the aircraft as you go into higher, thinner air, you have to go to a, a higher angle of attack on the blades. As you increase the angle of attack on the blades, what happens with teetering? Of course, it increases. Right? So as you go to a higher and higher altitudes and you're going to a higher and higher, higher and higher angle of attack on the blades, then the amount of teetering has to increase. And that because of that, the speed at which a retreating blade stall would occur is lower and lower and lower. So if you look at the uh, Robinson R44 down in good old thick air near sea level, the V&E is 130 knots. If you look at the chart and you go on up to high altitudes of 8, 10,000 feet, the V&E is considerably decreased, right? And uh, you can get yourself in trouble <clears throat> Actually, the biggest thing you can get yourself in trouble with is on a descent. You know, if you were at high altitude in a helicopter, and let's say that whatever altitude you're at based on temperature and altitude, your V&E was 90 knots. If you're up there at that high altitude and you decide to make a descent, you have got to make the descent by lowering the collective. You can't do like a lot of fixing wing guys do and lower the nose a little bit and say, well, I'm going to convert this altitude into airspeed and come on down quicker. You can't do that. With a, with a helicopter, if you do that, you run the risk of flirting with V&E and getting a retreating blade stall.